morning to all the audience. Thank you for your time to attend this webinar organized by Bookstock. The topic that I would like to share today is about what is the emotional hijacking and can, how can we manage it. So first of all, let's try to understand what is the emotional hijacking is about. So what is emotional hijacking? Emotional hijacking, as known as amygdala hijacking, is a term introduced by a psychologist named Daniel Gorman in his book that published in 1995. So emotional hijacking refers to an immediate and intense emotional reaction that is out of proportion to the situation. In other words, it means when someone that has lost his or her control or seriously react to someone or something. So next. How does the emotional hijacking happen? Biologically, the amygdala, one of the brain structures, is designed for the threat or danger response. So when we are facing a threatening situation, amygdala uses seconds to activate the fight or flight response. Let me give you an example. So a person who is in a hurry to a meeting, come to the restaurant and wants to get the takeaway. However, this person starts to shout and yell at the waiter because he waited for 10 minutes. From this example, we can identify that the person perceived that the 10 minutes waiting was too long and he was going to be laid as a threat. Therefore, he used shouting behavior to respond to the situation which was the fight response towards the worry of getting late to the meeting. So that's all about what is emotional hijacking is. Moving forward, how can we relate the mental health to amygdala or emotional hijacking? Many people who struggle from PTSD, anxiety disorder, panic disorder, and etc shows greater amygdala activation such as the increase of fear and anxiety response to the situation. Like for example, for people who struggle from PTSD, they always have a fear of meeting, meeting, meeting people who have, uh, uh, depends on the what traumatized uh, events before. So let's say for a rape case, so he may have a fear of seeing uh, persons around, especially female, uh, especially male. So not only that, People who always work under stress and experience chronic stress may trigger frequent amygdala hijack or emotional hijack, leading to overactive in the fight versus flight response. Therefore, it is important to work on understand your triggers and take charge of your emotional reaction because emotional hijacking can happen in everyone. So what can you do about it? If you find yourself in the middle of hijack, there are several actions you can do to quickly get your unwanted emotions under control. So first, put the brake. This concept is similar to when you almost bang a car, you put the brake immediately. When you're truly feeling out of control, excuse yourself from the situations you got triggered and give yourself a break instead. According to some articles, the fight or flight process takes approximately 20 minutes to completely calm down physiologically. So, allow yourself to have this 20 minutes time to cool down completely before attending back to the threatening situation. Similarly, if you are with someone who is experiencing emotional hijack, Give the person some time to cool down completely before you talk to the person again. This often happens in the couples, in the family, and including to the child who has a sudden emotional outburst. So be, remind, uh, be mindful that uh, always give a space for people who is under emotional outburst or emotional hijack so they can take a brief and then they are able to labor they are able to attend their attentions uh, and their uh, uh, emotional, uh, probably their con uh, decisions making or listening better. 
So secondly, slow down and just take a deep breath. When you slow down your breathing, you activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest response. This system helps us to um, slow down your fight versus flight uh, uh, response. So this type of deep breathing calms down your nervous system and allows you to make a thoughtful decision in a stressful time. Third, try to attend to your emotions and label it. I have many people ask me, eh, when you have emotional hijacking or when you are emotional outburst, uh, when you are in the out emotional outburst situations, how intense to your emotions able to help you? Okay. When amygdala turns on, our brain will switch off the part of the brain structure called prefrontal cortex that works for thinking, decision making, or logical reasoning. So when we try to name the emotion, it helps to tame the threatening situation and we are able to take back the control later on. So what you can do is try to be mindful and be not the and notice the change in your tone, tightness in your chest or stomach, clenching in your jaws or hands, and etc. So in this moment, just try to have some self talk uh, towards yourself. Uh, for example, I'm feeling angry right now. So when you do this, it will actually melt the amygdala and it will. You know, help ourselves to manage the situations better uh, after a certain period of time. So, fourth, grounding technique. This is a very common technique for people who struggle for anxiety, for people who always all over the place, uh, short attentions, um, my wondering. This technique is able. Uh, this technique is able to help us to come back to the present. It is a technique to use our senses to bring ourselves back to present. Commonly, I will always start with feel my feet on the ground and start to talk to myself. I can see the dustbin in front of me, the table, the paper, the pencil. Then you can switch to I can hear the aircon sound, the people voice outside of my room. Etc. I can smell the aromatherapy, the scent, the oil. I can touch the texture of the table. And then lastly, you can I can taste maybe the coffee inside my mouth, etc. So by focusing this uh, technique, the persons are able to bring the attention back to presence and feel grounded instead of. Uh, attending to the threatening situation and uh, an ongo ongoing crisis that is still happening. So just now, those are the tips that you can use when you are in the midst of uh, emotional hijacking. So in a long run, how can we prevent or manage frequent emotional hijacking. So why I say frequent emotional hijacking is because emotional hijacking can simply happen to everyone um, because we are all uh, having stress uh, mainly on uh, in daily basis. So it is important to actually learn how to prevent frequent emotional hijacking or frequent emotional outbursts. So there are several skills that you can practice in order to help to manage the emotional response uh, better. First of all, uh, it is a very famous uh, positive psychology uh, and third based psychology uh, technique which is called mindfulness. Basically, it is help you to improve your awareness especially how you feel, think, and behave consciously and unconsciously when you are triggered. One of the ways to improve your awareness is to practice mindfulness. It is the ability to be fully present, aware of where you are and what you are doing, 
and not overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on around you. By practicing mindfulness in daily basis, it will help to strengthen the emotion regulation skills. When you find yourself in a stressful situation, it will be easier for you to switch on the mindful part of your mind. So when we're talking about uh, mindfulness, uh, there are three main things. So one is back to the present, describe the in a non-judgmental way and especially and as uh, as well as to increase the awareness and notice what's going on around you and pay attention to it. However, this is a broad topic to discuss, so best is actually to have another uh, webinar to just mainly focus on talking the technique and also the uh, the skills uh, instead of in just these one sessions because it may not enough. So next is to improve your emotion regulation skills. So by, by increasing your awareness, you can slowly um, improve how you will regulate your emotions in daily basis. Some skill components include the ability, ability to recognize the trigger, to label your emotions, and identify what is the emotion response or react is. So a lot of people will also ask me, what is emotional response and what is the difference between emotion response and react? So usually I will tell those people uh, react is in a quick second uh, whereas emotional response is when you create a space or pause in between you are able to attend it uh, uh, more wisely. So but reaction is uh, it's just too quick maybe it's just, uh, just in seconds. Usually it happens to people who have a uh, coping skills that uh, already become an automatic pilot. So, for example, when you a person's angry, so the person shout at the, uh, to another person. So the shouting is a reaction. So go back to emotion regulation. Strong emotion regulation skills can also help enhance your long term well being. It will also help to improve performance at work. It will enrich personal relationships and even lead to the overall better well-being. Since it is a skill set, it requires just practice, practice, and just practice. Last but not least, you can always improve the coping skills and also your stress management. Try to be aware of your stressors and identify when the acute stress has turned into chronic stress. So the difference of uh, acute stress and chronic stress is acute stress is uh, short term and, uh, and whereas the chronic stress is actually uh, accumulative and uh, become long term. So if you find yourself constantly in a state of stress, then try to employ some stress management skills and it should also include some fast acting stress relieving a uh, reliever. So for example, like breathing exercise, grounding technique for immediate relief in stressful situation. But in our in order to reduce overall stress, try to do some healthy habits or adapt some healthy habits. Like for example, uh, a lot of people will say exercise, which is very important. Meditation, journaling, and talk to people that you feel trusted. So, is there any other question? Actually, I'm not quite sure how these things work, so I also don't know the uh, how the live uh, is going on. So basically, I'm just talking to myself. Yeah, this is how I really feel. So 
actually that's all from my sharing today. Thank you so much for your participation. Um, thank you, Cesar, for helping to set up and thank you for organizing this webinar from Bulldog Team. So if you have any questions, I will just wait here for another 50 minutes in order to answer some of the questions. Otherwise, I think I will just stop here and thank you for your attention.